Good morning everybody, this is Charlie Veach. This is Edinburgh in Clown World 11. Coming at you on September the 11th, 2021. 20 year anniversary of the most horrific and spectacular attack in modern times in the Western world. Anyway, I'm gonna show you around Edinburgh again. I'm gonna show you my skills as a videographer, cameraman, filmmaker, etc., etc. I'm a bad editor, but the trick is it's the only film stuff you want to show and editing's easy. So, welcome back to Scotland. Bull is still called the Black Bull. On September the 11th, the question really is, are you going to be iron like a lion in Zion? If like me, you've not been to Edinburgh for a while. And I came here a year ago, did my, you know, walk around thing, but I've not been here. St. James's Centre, just off Princess Street. Look what they've done to my old 1970s modern, modernist boy. Look what they've done to him. Behind me, you can see the Balmoral Hotel. It stands over Edinburgh Waverley and uh, the clock tower is famously two minutes fast so that you don't miss your train. And just look at that architecture. I'm gonna spend... Look at the optimism, the detail, the glory, the... the... Yeah, enough adjectives, just look at it. Come on, sunshine, you wanna come out today? And directly over the Balmoral, you have the Apple Store which, uh, if you recall, they were the main company doing the forehead infrared gun. Very dystopian, pull the trigger. Beepy beepy, yet you're cool enough like a zombie to enter the store. Oh guys, I've been here 10 minutes, I'm triggered already. Scottish Socialist Party. And mm -mm -mm. Who could miss out on that old Chinese Communist Party or Soviet pentagram star? Delicious. So you come around, hi. Hi guys, don't mind me, I'm just a, an annoying YouTuber. Just an annoying YouTuber, I like to... You definitely are. I know, I like to criticize and take the piss and... So never take anything I say personally. Oh no, no problem, what's your name? Charlie Veach. Hey, yeah, I'm you. Yeah. No, but my question is... Yeah. If socialism works so well, and Scotland has been SNP socialist for a decade... You think? Yeah. I've not been fucking paying attention much during the SNP. So no, you, got, you guys make the SNP look like fascist, but to me, who's a centrist, I'm a centrist, you guys are socialists, to the left. You're a bit to the left. But why does Scotland have the lowest life expectancy for men in all of Europe, and why are there more druggies and junkies and crackheads per capita than any other country in Europe? Because we're run by the Tories and the Tories. You're not run by the Tories, you're run by the Scottish Nationalist Party. Nicola Sturgeon. Fat Tories. Tartan Tories. Fat Tories. Did he say fat Tories? Or... Oh, I'm going to go interview him. Thank you very much. My friend, my friend, my friend, what do you mean by fuck Tories? Tell me. Fuck. Dude, what, what do you mean? I believe in free speech. I'm happy to hear your opinion. Anyway, nice tattoos, looks good on you. My viewers will know I am half Scottish, half Brazilian, and to have an Edinburgh Scottish bus in full Brazilian, yellow and green, like an Amazon parrot. Oh, it's nice that they cater for the, the half-caste Scottish Brazilians like moi. For the young guy I was filming before I chased the heckler, I went back to him and I said, look, my name's Charlie Veach, I'll show you my YouTube channel. He goes, no, I, I don't want to see. And I said, okay, look, I know you think I'm an asshole, but I'm quite, you know, moderate. And he goes, no, I don't think you're moderate. And he says to me, I just don't. And he looks me in the eye. He goes, I just don't think you know anything about politics. And he was like 21. Okay, they've had a few renovations at the National Gallery of Scotland. Some underground stuff. It says Scotland's art in a whole new light, which what I think they're trying to say, they've installed some skylights in the underground section. So the only way to say, oh, nice burp. I like that. The only way to, uh, the guy's smiling again. The only way to um, see it is to actually go there with my eyeballs and have a look. So we're gonna do that. Oh, you need a booking? Yeah, you need to book your ticket first. Oh, how do I do that? Right here, send the picture. Oh, brilliant. Oh, goodness. We're gonna have to QR this. You can't just walk in? No? Oh. We're ending it on a Botticelli.
why not? There's some very, very, very good art here at the Scottish National Gallery. And here we have the Virgin adoring the sleeping child Christ. It's incredible. And this one's from 1485. Only about 100 years after Geoffrey Chaucer wrote The Canterbury Tales, which is uh, in Middle English. Ancient Greece, ancient Greece, they bloody love it. Okay, look at that. Thanks, bus. There's a blooper, but I'll leave it in because I just need to move over here. Right, so behind me you've got Edinburgh Castle. It's a natural volcanic rock formation and they're like, yeah, alongside Arthur's seat. Edinburgh Castle rock. I'm too close to that bus for the noise. I just want you to imagine over the last, say, 700 years, groups of raiders, invaders, angry Scottish dwarves with battle axes going, oh, hi. Don't like that fucking clan that's over there. I'm gonna go and invade. There's the famous uh, white elephant, Edinburgh tram. Now, it's a good good time today, September the 11th, 2021. Scotland's been racked by this uh, Scottish independence uh, nonsense by the Scottish National Party for. <laughs> now the tram's blocking my backdrop. Fucking hell! So yeah, Scotland over the last decade has been this whole Scottish independence. 55% wanted to stay part of uh, Great Britain. Now, what, what is, I think, interesting is that in, in, the, seven, in the year 1707, there was a, an act of the union, legislation brought in that combined Scotland and England. It wasn't an occupation. It wasn't an invasion. It wasn't, you know, China into Tibet saying, oh, Tibet's Chinese now. It wasn't like that. Scotland's always been quite powerful. I mean, just look at this city. And uh, we, as a Scot, we, when we joined the English 314 years ago, we didn't do it as the conquered. We did it as voluntary partners. the Jew. Excuse me. Don't tell me I hate people. You've never met me. You're calling my country apartheid? Yes, I am. Apartheid, like South Africa? That's right, yeah. Like South Africa, where they treated the that's blacks right. like third-class right. citizens? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you think that uh, my country... I'm following the wording of Beth Salem in calling it apartheid. Yeah, but nobody, no one else in Israel calls it an apartheid. Well, they do. And many people outside Israel do as well. All right. But, uh, but that doesn't mean I hate Jews. So please don't say that to me. Okay, but uh, sorry, I, I want. But um, Jewish people walking past, you're accusing them of being like South Africans. Yes. And you think that's fair? I'm accusing Israel of being like South Africa. Yeah. And by extension, Israeli people, because we all do three years in the military service. Well. So are we are we apartheiding the Arabs? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We are. Yes. Even the High Court judges? Even in Jerusalem? the High Court judges. Well, if you take... The, Ar the, the Arab High Court judges. So if you take the, Are they being apartheid? So if you take the apartheid, the occupied territories, for example... Yeah. Right, so if you talk about the justice system, in the occupied territories, the Israeli justice system applies to the settlers, doesn't it? And what applies to the Palestinians? The military justice system. Oh, it's uh, similar to England in the 1800s with Ireland when you killed millions of them with the potato famine. That's maybe true, but... No, it is true. It's history. It's a documented fact. <laughs> you, you British people killed millions on purpose. Well, unfortunately, I can't now protest about what happened in 1800. No, but you can talk about 1947. Fine, I can talk about 1947, but I can't change 1947 either. Okay, but what it is, we have a saying in Israel that a uh, woman with open leg should not call other prostitutes. Do you understand okay. what I'm saying? That's a bit like uh, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Yes. Slightly cruder, but yes, same but idea. Britain is ten times worse than Israel. I don't represent Britain. <laughs> don't Are you British? 
I'm being British, yeah. Okay. I represent Britain. Have you paid tax in this I country? Me. Have you paid tax in this country? Of course. Okay, so you've contributed to the British establishment. If you like, yeah. Okay, anyway. Shalom. Hey, here you go, Halifax Bank. This is a major bank, part of the H Boss Group, Halifax Bank of Scotland. And in case you're wondering why all the corporations in the last 10 years have gone super woke, here you've got the disassembled South African psychedelic flag, which is the LGTV4, the LBBB, the LB, L LGTV 4K flag. And the reason they do this is a big company called BlackRock. It's an investment bank. It's called the World Shadow Bank. There's a, the CEO is a gentleman called Larry Fink. Just think about it. And he developed a, a kind of environmental, societal and community score that companies can increase their standing with BlackRock Investment Bank and therefore get more investment, more shares bought by being super woke. So all the, all the youngsters that are like, wow, society loves us. It's like, no, they still love money. And they're using that delicious uh, virtue signaling to get that investment. Mm -mm -mm. Hello, tram driver. Okay, there's St. John's, St. John's Church on the west end of Princess Street. We come round, big ass Celtic cross. Castle's behind there, we're on South Charlotte Street. We're going to go up to Charlotte Square and we're going to have a look at the White House for the First Minister of Scotland, the Downing Street of Scotland. It's the residence of none other than Nicola Sturgeon. Mm -mm -mm. I wonder if I squeeze her, I'd get any caviar. Retro bus for the win, for the win. Ride along in a retro bus. Pretty cool. Hey, welcome to Charlotte Square. And now this. Here commences Edinburgh's new town. Probably, in fact, I'd say it is, the most impressive and spectacular enlightenment architectural house building project ever in any city, ever, including Rome, <laughs> Cairo, all the old classics. Edinburgh just took it one step further. They basically built half the city in the incredible Edinburgh sandstone, harking back to ancient Greece. The Scots should be very proud of Edinburgh. And ironically, Edinburgh is one of the few non-lefty, non-SNP regions of Scotland. There's a lot of English people in Edinburgh. There's down George Square. There's a very subtle and soft Scottish accent and I'll see if I can get some people in a kilt. I'll try and uh, do a crop on these guys, but there you go. Typical sight here in Scotland is men dress nicely in kilts. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Downing Street of Scotland. This is Charlotte House, sorry, Butte House on Charlotte Square. Construction began in 1793, loving the ancient Greek. And construction ended in 1805, just like the rest of the new town. In incredible. So behind there, in those hallowed and sacred corridors of power, the First Minister, Miss Sturgeon. Mrs. Sturgeon, is she married? Does she have kids? No, she's not got kids. She's not the type to uh, have skin in the game for the future. She's the type to change it for all those dirty breeders. Yeah, there you go. Well, it is a Saturday, so people are nicely dressed. We're here outside the National Records of Scotland. Epic ancient Greek pillars. Again, this would be built in the late 1700s, early 1800s. And I just want to tell you a little bit, not so much about Scotland, but let's just uh, delve. Oh, oh, that's, that's bald. Don't look at that. I'll stay like this. So you d look at that. Look at that full head of hair. <gasps> no. <laughs> so, just under a thousand years ago, in 1066, uh, the Celts were the main power up in Scotland. And uh, there was all sorts of other feudal lords in this. And of course, there was bleed from the Anglo-Saxons under King Harold into Scotland. There was a, a big mix already. But in 1066, poor King Harold had to fight off two kings. He managed to defeat 
King, another, you can imagine being King Harold of England and being invaded by King Harold of Norway. King Harold, Harald the Bar, was defeated at the Battle of Stamford Bridge in 1066. And then poor King Harold, the one that won, the English guy, he then had to face William the Conqueror and thousands of Normans, Normans being a hybrid Viking Frenchman. Get it? Northmen settled in Northmandy, Normandy. They came over with William the Conqueror. He wasn't called William the Conqueror before he conquered, but conquer he did. Harold got shot in the face, in the eyeball, as uh, depicted in the bio tapestry. And then the Normans became, you know, the kind of elite of England. And the reason I raise William the Conqueror and the Norman elites and bringing a lot of Latin and Norman words into the English language, sorry, Norman words into the English language, which is a kind of a kind of Germanic French with a bit of Latin. There was a lot of Latin already. England is a synthetic mongrel language of Indo-European, Germanic, Celtish, Latin, and Norman in the end. So what did William the Conqueror do? He was like, right, I now own this island. This is a fucking rich place. There's a few aristocrats in the north not bowing to my rule. So I'm going to send my seven foot tall Viking warriors from Normandy. The reason it was Normandy, the king of uh, Sweden, his brother married a princess in Paris. And then, you know, they settled. They actually sailed down the Seine River and invaded Paris. Good on them. So coming back to England, William the Conqueror is right. I want a registry. I want a record of all the land, all the owners, and who's going to pay me tribute. And many of you will have heard of the Domesday Book of England. I think it was written in 1068 or 1072, one of the two. And there you go. What I'm trying to say is organized civilizations like order and they like records. You scratch them. <laughs> oh my lord. So the main big department store, which was a house of Fraser, is now a Johnny Walker whiskey, like uh, Disneyland type uh, tourist trap. There you go. American tourists love it. There is a reason why Edinburgh has such a high concentration of listed and stunning buildings. Thanks, boss, it never ends. It's because, drum roll, brrr, Scotland was a bit too far for the Nazi bombers to get to. Yes, they bombed a bit of Glasgow. Yes, they bombed a bit of Edinburgh. Yes, they bombed a few naval assets in the first of fourth, which is the kind of uh, where uh, all the Edinburgh naval bases are. But they didn't have, well, there was no need. They could bomb Sheffield or Manchester or London or Southampton or Portsmouth. There's no need to fly all the way to Scotland. And the end result is that after the nihilism and the whole Nietzschean God is there, dead mass spectacle of warfares of uh, World War I and World War II, the uh, Enlightenment project of uh, Edinburgh architecture has survived largely unscathed. Spooky. Spooky scary skeletons. Dun 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 Shugle hips. What the hell's a shugle hip? Left hand. Cranny. Big heart. <laughs> Granny sucker jaw. Rosy cheek. A kicker. Are you a, a dirty kicker? Tatty heat. Let me tell you guys a true story from 1996 when I was living here, going to school here in Edinburgh. Beside the Caledonian Hotel at the West End, it's now the Waldorf Astoria. Very New York. New York, Manhattan, Waldorf. In 1996, Oasis, the biggest band in the world at the time, played a gig here in Edinburgh. My sister, who's 13 years older than me, I was 16 at the time, she was 29. She's so cool, my sister. She got, she got me and my friend, VIP, that was my brother actually, John, and we went to VIP access all areas, passes for the Oasis gig. The Gallagher brothers, Noel and Liam, were staying here at the Caledonian Hotel, as, were, as was Bonehead and the other members of Oasis, I can't remember the name. We got to meet them. They signed our copies of What's the Story, Morning Glory, and I've never been more impressed than my sister 
getting me to meet the biggest band on earth. It's like being in the 60s and meeting the Beatles. And what reminded me here, when we arrived here, the way you get to the Gallagher bedroom, there was a code, there's a password, and the password at reception was Charlie Supernova. And you can imagine what was going on in the bedroom with a password like that. Oh my God, it's Indiana Jones. Yep, I'm immature. I'm the 41 year old, 12 year old. Let's do it. Oh my fucking God. Let's do the other one. Oh shit. Woo wow, we didn't die. Something to note here in Edinburgh, it's such a fairy tale, stunning, tourism heavy city that everyone's filming, everyone's shooting TV and movies, everyone's got their smartphone out going, ooh, ooh, ooh. So I don't think I'm gonna get any trouble from the native population for my photon collections. But I hope you're appreciating the 4K at 60 frames per second. That's about 12 times more photons than 1080 at 30 frames per second. Usher Hall. Usher Hall. Ushering in the new world order. Man, just feel the edginess dripping, dripping here. Look, there's a one of those with a not allowed sign. And anyway, they're saying no to the ancient Buddhist one that spins to the left, which is a sacred Buddhist Hindu symbol. It means peace, and they're banning that. And look, if you put the letters backwards, you get that Soviet aesthetic, which, uh, as we know, all end that ended very well, didn't it? And then just to top it all off, a giant statement that all cops, even those that rescue babies from burning buildings, all cops, even those that shoot dead a terrorist when he's about to shoot 10 kids, all cops, even those that find the rapist that raped your sister, all cops are bastards, but they're not, so. <laughs> young people, fucking young people, man. Okay, just to show you that everything in the city center is close to the castle, as it kind of looms, hovers over it. Here is the Edinburgh Chabad. Now, as far as I know, Chabad is a kind of like a gentleman's club for Jewish businessmen or Jewish people working somewhere, like a kind of business club. Why am I filming it? Do you know, like, you know that I am Charlie the Arab? A lot of my DNA, about 10%, comes from the Arab part of the world. So there I was in Swinton with my kids in the play area. There was an Orthodox Jewish guy. He looked like the rabbi from The Simpsons. Same sort of friendly energy as well. And he came up to me, adamant, adamant, that I was a Jew. And I said, Shalom, brother. And then he started saying, oh, what's your family name? Where are you from? I said, half Brazilian, half Scottish. He goes, what's your name? Where are you from? Are you from Portugal? He goes, what's your Brazilian? I said, the Brazilian family name, my mother's maiden name, was Valadares. And he quickly goes on his phone and discovers that the Valadares family was an old Sephardic Jewish family forced to, co to convert to Roman Catholicism in the 1500s. So this is Charlie the Arab and Charlie the Jew. Okay, you can all read, so I don't need to say, but the Birkin hair is the biggest and um, best known uh, stripper joint in the pubic triangle. This is the pubic triangle. There's another one there, Western Bar. It's Manchester Baby Dolls. What a name, what a name. Sorry, I'm tripping bollocks. I'm not, it's number one show bar baby dolls and I read that as Manchester I'm going mad Western bar lap and strip wonder if they've been affected by the uh, uh, cough and sneeze restrictions all right guys we're coming down into the to the grass market I think you like your old dates here we go in unity to dwell in 1696 when America was still a British colony the 13 colonies and it was all about Trading in beaver furs. I've seen that film with Leonardo DiCaprio when he gets buggered by the bear. I've seen it. Beaver furs, fighting the Indians. Oh, how prophetic. Aye, right, you're never that far away from the castle. Get some parallax, guys. Video game developers will understand. If you're gonna be a defense lawyer, your name better be very good and go. Cool. Okay, I notice weird things. So the, the Salvation Army Women's Hostel, potentially a woman's refuge away from uh, 
violence and abuse and they've named it Kick-Ass Hostels. Now, if that isn't triggering, I don't know what is. Okay, edge of the castle, coming down into the grass market. Again, ancient, ancient, ancient buildings. 500, 400 years old. And uh, something made me smirk. So they're like, why, why should we lay this stone? Why should we build anything? Why, 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 why did you have to die? Why do anything? Anyway, the reason we laid this stone was for the glory of God. Behind me, you got a proper Scotsman in the kilt giving a historical tour, but because we're not thieves, you nor I, we've not paid. It's like a peep show when Mark kicks out the, the, the thief from his tour guide. Okay, we'll be quick in case that, uh, you know, theme tune Scottish music is uh, copyrighted, but look, the McDonaldization of Scottish identity was invented by Walter Scott many hundreds of years ago. And uh, they're even playing Braveheart music. Okay, here's another black bull. In fact, I was sat in the Black Bull with my dad 20 years ago and through the window we saw Prince William and Prince Charles doing something here with all the security, of course, but we were in there. Another Black Bull, how many are there? I want to see a bar called the Black Cock. There's a reason why we call the old world the old world and Americans and Brazilians and Australians and Kiwis are like, Struth, mate, fucking ancient. Look at that, established 1516. Brazil was only discovered by the Europeans in 1500. My God! Okay, we're having a look up... Uh, Jesus, is it Victoria Street? I think so. But what attracted me was the... Wait, look at this doorway over here. I'll try not to upset these guys eating, but it says here, God for all his gifts, 1616. My goodness. And there's the Holy Trinity. Right, I saw the nose, Groucho Marx. <laughs> what the hell? I don't see any fancy dress. All looks quite standard. Yeah, I think this is Victoria Street. I found that in a sec, but it's worth just having a little uh, walk and not too much talk. <laughs> Look at that. Was it Shop for Freemason? Look at where is it? Shop for Freemason. Why not? And then you come up. Yeah, it's definitely Victoria Street. <laughs> Some official Harry Potter stuff. Yeah, I'm with that lady. I'm not a Harry Potter fan either. Okay, I'm muttering to myself because I'm going to tell you guys a story. There was a... Here it is. Yeah, it's still called the Liquid Rooms. My God! 20 years later, it's still called the Liquid Room. Not going to go into detail, but... Yeah, exactly. 20 years ago, I was um, grabbed by the bouncers in there and taken aside, and the police was called on me because I was misbehaving. And as a 21-year-old, it's amazing how programmed you are. I'll keep the camera moving so you don't get bored. When the bouncer said, there was a bench over there. They said, sit down, the police are on their way. I sat down, obedient, brainwashed, didn't understand. 10 minutes later, the police came and took me away, handcuffed in the back of a police car. I could have walked away, could have told them to fuck off, but they told me, they said, you sit down. And I sat down, that was nightclub bouncers telling me that. So, yeah, and in, that's important to know that. That the point I'm trying to make is, is that everyone has a past and every asshole has a future. I oh, know I am originally, but um, I've not lived here for 20 years. Oh, yeah, so a long, a long time. Anyway, just so you know, my viewers is a nice guy off camera just saying, ah, oh, you're not from around here. And he, he, he actually is the one that pointed out the let there be light. And I think the pun they're trying to make is that reading books will enlighten you and there'll be light in your mind and your heart. Exactly. Nice one. That's really good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I just want to show you 
Edinburgh's over two levels, which is no small feat when you're building a city, an urban center in uh, the 1500s. Jeez, like, here's the central library. We were just chatting to the guy about the Let There Be Light. There's the National Library of Scotland. And underneath us is the hay market and grass market. We'll run across to give you the context. And again, let's get in front of the, in front of the jag. Here we go, we did it. Again, a city over two levels. The rich up here and the peasants down there living in the underground houses where there's no natural light. So I'll tell you the story of Greyfriars Bobby. There's a graveyard, big ass graveyard over there, Greyfriars Graveyard. Some very big names buried in there. And we all know how loyal dogs are. This dog sat at his master's grave, I think until he died, and people rub his nose for good luck. I gotta do it now, peer pressure, Jesus. And uh, this monument and the pub behind is all dedicated to Greyfriars Dog. And because of the incredible attention it attracts, you even get a real life dog. Yeah, of course, of course. Come round, come round, madam. Madam, you can walk round me. Look, there's, there's all, look at all this pavement. Madam, I'm sorry, you're being a bit aggressive. I mean, there's plenty. Dude, there's plenty. Of Look, there's a whole pavement. Just wait a minute when Alan's going to take the picture. Well, walk around me. It's a public pavement. I'm sorry, I'm not going to get barked at by someone to get told to move. You can move yourself. I'm trying to take a picture you in. Anyway, your poor husband looks like he's sick of you telling other men what to do. You just told me to shut the fuck up. Dude, you're not even homeless. You're not even homeless. I've seen you playing with your money. Oh, dude, don't come right up to me, dude. Don't come up to me like that. Don't, don't. Dude, you're a little old man. Don't scare me. Hey. Dude, you can't grab me on my camera. Both of you, don't assault people. You've lost. Are you taking a picture? Uh, it's a video. Yeah, anyway, your husband uh, grabbed my arm and tried to intimidate me, but. Dude, man, you're just being rude. Dude, you're not even homeless. Shut the fuck up. You're not homeless. You're taking the piss by getting people to feel sorry for your dog. Oh, it's not even your dog. I see you're just getting money from it. All right, fair enough. Okay, there's a 500 year old. Uh, edge of a wall, Flodden Wall. There's a big wall around this area. And as the plaque says, it was from fear of imminent English invasion. The bastards. The reason I'm filming directly now, the bald guy with the wife, I'm not gonna go into it. Look, I was a dick, I'm always a dick. It's fucking, I just don't like getting told rudely to move and I don't move. He came up to me, apologize, shaking my hand, saying blah, 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 sorry, sorry for my wife, sorry for this. And I said, no problem, name's Charlie Veach. I showed him the YouTube. He's all smiles. He goes, oh, am I gonna be famous? I said, no, but we should film a 10 second section, me and you shaking hands, all smiles. And he goes, no, 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 no worries. And he was super nice about it. So you can have arguments, you can have conflict. Does it need to end in starvation, genocide, warfare, and killing people? Does it even need to end in arrests? What happened to the good old 20th century? You fucking asshole. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Yeah, fucking twats. No one gets hurt. Behind me is Oddfellows Hall. Oddfellows was where you came to drink in the mid 90s if you were underage, like I was as a 15, 16 year old, with your fake Isaac international student card, saying that you were 18. Did they check ID? Well, not really. I, um, I see all this stuff in the window and I, I don't know what it's used for. Is it for smoking pipe tobacco? Um, is, is the grinder, in case your tobacco leaf is particularly tough? I don't understand any of this. What is magnetic number one? What is the original shark teeth grinder? Look, oh look, it's a, it's some sort of a flower. I think that's Japanese maple. My green, fi my green fingered middle aged men and women will agree that that is definitely Japanese maple, isn't it? Alongside the former Edinburgh Royal Infirmary, you've got the meadows with a big walk down. And I've seen a few, there's a couple others, but there's a, a refugee community kitchen and uh, the volunteers, which I won't embarrass on camera, but sticking a camera in their face are selling all, the, and I guess this is all for the cause of helping refugees. Yes, yes, and avoiding food waste. Avoiding food waste now, good. Thanks very much. 
20 years ago, I was very disappointed with my university experience. I mean, uh, I was a bit of a fucking weirdo. My parents always lived internationally. I finished school in Edinburgh. Tried to go to a uh, philosophy college down in London, hated that. So I kind of, you know, stayed at Edinburgh for university. Very glad I did. My good experiences were outside of university. You know, I, that's where I graduated, McEwen Hall. Yes, connected to the McEwen's Brewery. When you're a rich brewer, you build a hall after yourself. Hooray. My experiences outside of university with my friends, with, uh, you know, going out, partying, meeting people, was the true education. I was doing philosophy here with outside courses such as sociology, anthropology, and criminology. We're going to go to old college and show you where I studied criminology. But from someone that grew up watching, you know, movies from like Cambridge, Oxford, Harvard, Yale, you know, University of California, fucking good shit, you know. People wearing tweed, arguing philosophy. No, it was nothing like that. It was actually a fucking shock how uh, shit university was. You know, you're probably better um, becoming a plumber, if I'm honest. You probably earn a lot more. So, uh, NHS no, test and protect, check, check in Scotland. So, it's a sold out event we test it guys do you need the covid passport so they've changed the building when i was doing it, it was in the hume tower which is further down there now it's in the dugald building another suitably scottish name so this is where the young veechlings would study philosophy if they did the edinburgh university experience now now uh it should really be called philosophy was, there's no philosophy it should be called appreciation of historical philosophy there was no encouragement to come up with new theories to discover new moralities and ethics it was all like, oh, look at these old philosophers and study that, rehash that in an essay and give it back to us. And you know me, I found that shit. And in case you're wondering where the money came from, it came from the bloody Salafists. Saud, King Fahad, he was the king when I was there. And there's his full name, King Fahad bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. And he passed away, this was built in the 90s. He passed away. And uh, we all know about the young king. So why am I pointing out Saudi money? Well, they're spreading that uh, Wahhabist extreme Islam around, which uh, your average uh, God-fearing everyday... Hi there, how are you? you okay. Yeah, your average everyday God-fearing Muslim would say, whoa, Wahhabis are a bit intense. And uh, yeah, other famous Saudi Arabians that use their money for uh, bad purposes. We don't even need to go there. But um, I'll just say that Barack Obama said, we got him, we got him. Okay guys, we're at the pear tree. There's Crystal Palace playing Tottenham on the BT Sport. Better not film that, break the law. And the pear tree, when I was at uni here, we're just right next to university. They've re renovated Appleton Tower, but many a great night in the pear tree. And uh, during the festival, it's even more fun. And we're coming down. My God, it brings back the memories. One of my usual haunts, I'd buy sandwiches from there. Oh, look, it's still there, not just coffee. Woohoo! Guys, I think this is the... No, it's not. This is not the uh, vaccine passport. This is just a checking in. Test and trace. In Scotland, it's called test and protect. Got to be different. <laughs> You know, at least they're civilized. Chalk graffiti, which will come off in the next rain, but World War III is near. Sorry, sunshine. World War III never really uh, had an official start date. Some people say it started officially when the Berlin Wall came down. Others say it started on uh, September the 11th. Other people say it uh, started more with the 1993 World Trade Center attacks. And here we are discussing such things on 9-11. Okay, it says here the Galloway Horde. I guess that's uh, George's uh, secret Swiss bank account after supporting Saddam Hussein. <laughs> so guys, I've just come off Nicholson Street to go towards Arthur's seat, which we're gonna talk about in a sec. We're here at Backbeat Records, and uh, there you go, Backbeat Records. And it was Douglas, wasn't it? It certainly was. Yeah. Certainly was, and it still is. I mean, this man, he's uh, arranging his record collection. This is authentic, and if you look in the shop, it's- There's 70,000. 
70,000 records, probably unique ones that might not even exist in any other physical form elsewhere on the planet. This stuff just arrived half an hour ago. Oh, did it? All this stuff here? Yeah, yeah. So I'm way too. Cool. If I'm picking them. Brilliant. Can I touch these ones? I'll be super safe. Yeah, yeah. I love this. Queen. Look at that. Look at Freddie Mercury there. What a sexy guy he was. He wants to break free. Right. Rolling Stone. Man, there's some classics here. Wow. Douglas, my viewers are going to love this. They're going to have some... Uh... Oh, look at that. Phil Collins. Man, you've got some good ones here. The Doobie Brothers. Look at them. San Francisco. Oh, of course they are. Love the name. Douglas, thank you very much. You're welcome. Here we go. 1790. There's some uh, obelisk here. Or some pyramid thing. Uncapped. That there is called Arthur's Seat. Now, if you look atop Arthur's Seat, you can see it's a very popular... I'll try and hold this steady. Sorry, guys. As you can see, it's a popular tourist destination. People go up there. And uh, if you watch the news like I do, addicted to the news. What is new? Tell me the plural of what is new, i.e. the news. There was an Indian Scottish guy, a British guy, but he was an Indian uh, ethnicity. He, uh, he's been arrested for murder because they came to Edinburgh for a honeymoon. And uh, the police suspect that he pushed his newlywed wife off Arthur's seat and as you can see she fell the 20 or 30 meters and died instantly and uh, of course you're innocent until proven guilty but in Scotland if they don't prove him guilty he could actually get convicted of one of three things you can either be guilty not guilty and the third one is not proven not proven which is basically the Scottish uh, legal system saying we know you fucking did it you bastard but we can't prove it here comes the highland granny two big tits and a hairy fanny na, 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 na. okay guys welcome to st leonard street and the st leonard's police scotland divisional headquarters for central edinburgh now if you've been on the piss and you got in trouble with the cops in edinburgh you'll probably end up to sober up at this uh Station. What we'll do is I'll tell you. How's my hair? If I'm like this, that's it. I don't look too bald that way. In 2010, I did a video called The Love Police in Edinburgh, or I was on Princess Street facing the castle, megaphoning. Now, just to compare Scotland police to, Ed to English police, I prefer English police. A bit more liberal, I guess. Scottish police, they come in, no questions asked push you against the wall, handcuff you and take you away. I complained to the Scottish executive and I did get an apology saying that they were a bit rough and uh, there was no need to handcuff the young 29 or 30 year old Charlie Veach. And I was behind here for five hours and it was no further action because what? A man speaking calmly on a megaphone, five hours in jail, so when the Karen Hall thing happened, remember Karen Hall with Big Red and Pussy Boy? I was so happy that that happened about a mile into England, into Northumberland. And when the cop turned up, he was the classic English cop, relaxed. Whereas in Scotland, they would have arrived and said, oh yeah, Mr. Veach fucking, get in the fucking back of the police car, you bastard. And that's how they are here. Once at St. Andrews University when I was uh, 18, saw a police Scotland BMW drive past and I said, oh look, they don't deserve BMWs. The policeman pulled over, came and grabbed me by the neck and said, what did you say? And me as an 18 year old, I'm sorry, no, I didn't say anything. And he's like, right, good. There's that Japanese maple again. Wow, you can see me at the mirror at the back. Hey, woo, focus on the face. Oh, there you go. Focus on me, oh, there you go. Focus on the face, there you go. Focus on me, there you go. Crackhead wars in Edinburgh. When you have to write it out in, in uh, capitals, it's because you don't really believe it yourself. OK, 
a slightly interesting name from the US Navy for their new aircraft carrier, the USS Pension Justice, but I guess we deserve it. And I've been here for about two hours and my God, some parts of Edinburgh are just like Beirut. We're in the Royal Surgeon's Hall in Edinburgh and this skeleton has Paget's disease. And that's mid 20th century, so quite recent. Okay guys, are you ready for this one? Are you ready? The soldier was wounded in France in 1917. Look at that, he got shot in the face, right between the, in the nose. And there's the front of his head. Okay. I don't know why this one's in a, in a museum about surgery, but okay. Okay, this French soldier got sliced in the head in the Battle of the Pyramids in Egypt in 1798. And this Scottish soldier, 200 years, no, 50 years previously, got shot in the back of the head by a, it says it shows the entry and exit wounds made by a musket hole. The clear holes suggest that the musket ball hit at high speeds and was probably fired from 45 meters away. Sorry, there's no photography in the building. Okay, I'm sorry. Is videoing okay? It's nothing at all. No photography No problem, I'll switch. She says no filming, but I had to get these. Oh my God, what scale? There you go, there's your scale. I have to admit, when I lived in Edinburgh for 11 years, I never went into the Surgeon's Hall, Surgeon's Hall Museum and the Wall Pathology Museum. Whew. You know what? It's worth a trip to Edinburgh just for this. I have never seen an exhibition or a museum as macabre Macabre? 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 As weird, as strange, as original as in there and I got banned from filming. So if I post this before those photons, enjoy. And if I post this afterwards, I hope you enjoyed those forbidden photons because not allowed. No one else is seeing that, but you are. And again, ancient Greece. But come to Edinburgh, go to Surgeon's Hall. It is fucking interesting. Okay, guys. On Southbridge, just up from the Royal Mile, you've got Old College. Old College was, I think, the main bit of Edinburgh University in the kind of uh, 1700s. Uh, Edinburgh University is a lot older than that. It's about 500, 600 years old. But uh, it says there, Academia Jacobi v Scotorv Regis, and a lot of Roman numerals, which I don't want to decipher right now, but we're gonna go in there and have a look. And this is interesting for me, because that's where I did criminology. After you, but sorry. And here we are, guys. Old college. There's government drones relaxing there. You can see the, the kind of uh, biomechanical oil paste that they're dropping. Oh, this brings back the memories. This was my favorite course, is criminology. And, uh, yeah, it was my um, my uh, attempt at uh, Scottish jurisprudence. Oh, they've uh, renovated. They're doing something here. There's a little John Deere tractor guy. And my criminology classes were in there. And I did do jurisprudence, which was in there, which is like the philosophy of law. They love it here. But again, just let's just pan around for you to enjoy the architecture of old college and I do like the kind of um, almost longhorn Texan bullhead you know the kind of uh, skulls of the cattle very Texan where are we El Paso no we're in Edinburgh you cannot have British academia without super happy graduating Chinese people there they go like lambs to the slaughter it's like Burke and Hare, he's gonna sell those bodies for 10 pounds each to the surgeon's hall. So I hope you've enjoyed Edinburgh in Clown World, which is uh, episode 11 of Entangled in Clown World, just to expand it a bit, to make it a bit more mainstream and uh, historical architecture, concepts, philosophy, politics, and of course, the choicest conflict and uh, photon issues that you'll see on the net. So 
This is Charlie Beach at the top of Hunter Street, Blair Street, outside the Tron. Take care of yourselves and of each other.